So, Luca, how many siblings you have? So, I'm only child. Oh, you are the only child. Okay. Yeah, because I think that uh, in Italy what happened is now this very actual discussion. But in general, I think that most of the people are only child because uh, it's a matter of life uh, cost. So, oh, cost of living. Yeah. I mean, the cost of raising a child is so high. Yeah. This is actually this is actually what is happening so mm. it's uh, very expensive yeah. i don't know how much it will be i can't remember the numbers we can check this later but it's something that uh, it's, it's happening it's a common thing that's happening like it's very expensive raising up a child so and then once uh, you start like, working mm. it's uh, it's a, somehow not a problem, but the big issue is that uh, we have a lot of retired people mm. and when you start working in Italy, mm. you are paying for their retirement. Oh yeah, I know about that. Yeah. Oh. So, so this is a system that is uh, somehow kind of has some problem, has some flaws. That, uh, Recently in France also there are some uh, things happening on where people are on the roads and they are talking about like I think it's related to retirement, something like that. Yeah, yeah. I think that exactly. What's happening in France is that uh, they are trying to raise. The government is trying to raise. I think the age limit age but from 64 to 62. I think two years, something like that. Yeah, I don't know. But is that no? Like how is working the system? It is. It's it's different. But uh, yeah, like uh, I think somehow I'm asking myself: Is it better? having like a public head or a private so because when you are working like you are paying taxes for the public health care it is free so that's a big thing in italy having a free health care but in us there is no free health care yes i don't think that's i don't know it's working honestly here it, it works like insurance there's yeah. no free health care in us the health care department is like shitty yeah but i don't know like if the companies will pay for you, so that's yeah, the they will co- deduct something from you. So insurance and in, that is different. So government-based free healthcare system. Like if a poor person who is not doing any job, just he's a farmer. If he go to a hospital, will he be treated in limited amount of money or not? So in India, there is like a lot of free hospitals. It is free, as it is free. Yeah. So in Europe, there are so many countries where there is free healthcare. So I think that is coming from the taxpayers' money. Yeah. From like who are young and who are earning. And okay. That's so fair. the similar problem is with Japan also. You know, no. Japan population is declining because people even at least in Italy people want to have one child, but in Japan people don't want to have child. Because the cost of raising a child is so, you know, high and inflation is also high. So one of my friends, he is, he has one child. He was saying, I won't do the second one because the cost of raising a child is so high. Yeah, with the inflation, with this inflation, it's yeah. getting worse. So, but yeah, we'll see here in the US how things will go. But, yeah, but population decline is a major concern set by Elon Musk also. Elon Musk was saying that we won't, like if somebody asked him whether we'll be able to, what is the most devastating thing for human beings? He said population decline. So he's saying a lot of countries are going into population decline. So there is a num- factor called uh, replacement ratio. For example, after some number of years, uh, parents die. So there should be a replacement for that. So that number, optimum number is 2.1. So both parents die, so there should be two children or on an average 2.1. So that is called replacement ratio. So recently China's replacement ratio due to one child policy went 1.9 and India is like 2.2 something like that. Japan is like one point very low. That's, uh, that's interesting. Actually, that's a big thing that having space uh, where to stay, to, where to feed all those people. Yeah. That's another good that's topic, and I think that space habitat is yeah. eventually like having more space in space yeah. on the moon. That will be like yeah. we'll colonize moon also, send some people over there. Yeah, I think that's yeah. <laughs> and make Earth a better place. Yeah. Probably we will not 
be there at that time. Yeah. Or we will be very old. Yes. But our next generations. Next year, your kids will be on the Dad, I'm going to moon. Yeah, instead of going to India or to Italy, yeah. they will take a yeah. rocket. Oh, I must go. My next rocket timing is <laughs> at 5 p.m. I have to reach one hour before <laughs> and I have to do boarding. I, I was wondering if they will lose the, sh the, the luggage as well. Yeah, like that's, have, that's really be interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's, a lot of things will change. Yeah, yeah space. Soon there will be like space. Will def definitely space. I don't know space for long time a particular like how we live on Earth. Initially, it will be for R and D activities, for space tourism, and a lot of these things. Short time space like they stay like short tourism. But after hundred years, like there will be well established colonies. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think like one of the biggest challenges is uh, the fact that shipping material. Yeah. It's expensive. So, uh, I was reading recently that it's estimated the price is like 1.2 million per kilograms. Yes, 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 yes. So that's it is pretty expensive. And so, yeah, with uh, like reusable launch technologies and all, I think things will become cheaper. And with more, I will say more research in fuel. So once we have uh, cheaper fuels and more stronger materials like composite materials so automatically weights weight can come down yeah that's true. yeah otherwise we get a back very light weight <laughs> so i don't know how it will be i mean the weather on the moon is uh, very cold or very hot it's negative 130 celsius or plus 130 celsius minus 132 plus 130 degree centigrade yeah oh. so we uh, need uh, two suitcases one for the winter and one for they go for the day, one for the night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, we'll see what will happen in the next generation. I'm super excited for that. That's yes, great. yes, yes. Okay. So, as we have seen the roads, they are pretty flat. So, doing autonomous driving in US is much easier, I believe, because that's properly marked, roads are properly marked, and everybody follows the rule. What about in Italy? Do you, what do you think is the future of autonomous driving and what how difficult autonomous driving is on the roads of Napoli or Milan? That's a, a very interesting point because uh, I think that uh, uh, having all the if we will have all the cars autonomous like have a city and from one day to another you will have all autonomous car. All the, all the cars are autonomous. All the cars are autonomous. I think it will be great. Yes. I mean, like, uh, yeah, that's what you were mentioning beginning in the beginning. Yeah. Having all the cars autonomous and all of them are communicating to each other, it becomes task. It it makes the problem much more easier. However, the problem of autonomous driving is much more challenging. You were mentioning about the anomaly if somebody is a uh, one car is not non autonomous. Yeah. I think that even if only one car will be not autonomous, you will add some uncertainty, yeah. some variables in our problem somehow because what will happen is that you cannot predict its behavior. Yeah. So, so, yeah. But and that yeah. will create uncertainty, but if that driver is a drunk one, and then, then be, and yeah. it will be a very disastrous. For example, so this thought came into my mind, for example, some car are non-autonomous, some car are autonomous and somebody who is drunk driving or due to some reason he is a, did an accident. Since other cars are connected, so I think, can it be more devastating because everything is connected. So the fault or some sort of accident can propagate much faster, uh, I think whether it's beneficial or not beneficial. That's interesting. I think that there are some protocols to inform the other cars around, uh, especially with 5G and eventually with other like communication networks. Uh, faster, com faster communication networks uh, can allow us to like let cars uh, communicate uh, way faster. And then like 20 meter above there is an accident, so be careful, something like that. That's correct. I would say 20 meter ahead there is a pothole. Yeah. There is something on the road, and there will be this protocol. And I think this 5G. Like, another example is you have a lot of trucks 
and you can use a, it's called platooning, when you are like uh, all on the same lane at the same speed, at the same distance. So, this platooning is like similar to like RV people, yeah. like there is a terminology in platoons. Uh, that is correct, yes. So in this way you will save a lot of gas, so at the very same time you will uh, obviously save the environment uh, and be more efficient. Uh, yeah. And this is something that I think Purdue is doing now. Yes, there are yes. some research about that. That's amazing because I think as saving the because there will be less drag you need to save when there is a platoon. Is there any relation with the fluid mechanics also? Because yeah. however I was reading like when you have when you are driving in the wake of other car, so you don't have to have a lot of drag coming. But that first car will be feeling that drag, but later cars will feel less drag. Yeah, especially with cars and the drag safety is very very. So if there is a truck driving, we should be behind that because it will be creating a lot of drag and a lot of I think yeah. will be running in its uh, you know fluid shadow. Yeah. But you will not be able to see us. So, <laughs> so that, that's why we need a communication <laughs> protocol. Yes, yes. So yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's true. Means like uncertainty, small kind of uncertainty of a human driver can create a lot of problems in the autonomy, overall autonomy, yeah, that's true. And uh, fault propagation, for example, there is an accident uh, ahead of us, cars can communicate to each other and, and find out the better solution, which which way to uh, solve this problem in a better way. Yeah, that's true. And there are other ethical aspects, like, uh, I don't know if you read about but MIT, there was these experiments saying, okay, should we prioritize uh, Saving like old people, young people. Oh, and that's true. You read about it. Yeah, that. there was an ethical issue. Like, for example, now autonomous driver has a challenge that there is an old lady crossing the road and a baby crossing the road, yeah. which it will be fucked first. That's that's interesting because depending on the culture, so they get different results. And in general, like another example was a Uber car, autonomous car that like hit a uh, pedestrian but the pedestrian was jaywalking, walking so was crossing in another loud area so it's something yeah it's something that uh, for example let's say you have an animal how can you distinguish that if an animal is crossing the road rather than a pedestrian there are all of these limit cases uh, yeah. it still needs to be proper rules are required for that autonomous system to work yeah. because I think there will be a challenge related to autonomous system. For example, an autonomous car kills anyone just by one fault. The car, a lot of people will sue Tesla and all, so they can easily get closed. However, a human kills, you know, by accident, he'll only be in the jail. Yeah. However, the autonomous system company totally will be like banned and all these things. A lot of people yes. putting allegation. You can see in the chat GPT now also. Once ChatGPT gives some wrong answer, they say, okay, ban ChatGPT, ban ChatGPT. However, I believe, means like with more iteration of ChatGPT, there will be much more filtration, less biasness and all. Yeah, what is it interesting about ChatGPT is, uh, I understand, now it's not my field, but I think ChatGPT is always giving you an answer. Yes. So you're asking ChatGPT something and it's always giving you an answer. It's, it's better than a, at least in the worst case scenario, it's better than a foolish person. Yeah. Chat GPT is always be acting mediumly wise and if you are talking to me and you ask the similar question to Chat GPT, Chat GPT will give you a much better answer than I can do. So in terms of it will be much, much wiser, yeah, it will help taking the decision in some of the it will be less un it will be less biased than humans at least so can we say that ChatGPT is a google browser 2.0 it's a new google browser yeah in some or other ways but google browser operates di differently in some or other ways like a lot of people goes to Uber, uh, means like, sorry, google browser to search in a particular way but in order to find the knowledge condensed in a paragraph format people you know quick knowledge so that is like for example you have to find a restaurant find restaurants yeah. so that is for google but if you want to ex want knowledge what is a restaurant 
and uh, which is the best food for me i am working out so it, it's like when you want to a sort, sort of knowledge a kind of a guru a trainer a teacher so it's like a giving you advice so that will be chat gpt but google will be like for different searches i think different kind of search like the restaurant near me show me the pictures of uh, illinois i see yes. i see yeah, what all think i like eat there yeah. yeah actually it makes sense yeah so i think uh, google business will become down a bit but it won't close the yes yes this was very interesting conversation yeah.